first of all, I would just like to say welcome. Uh, I am Nancy Gerber. I am the 2017-18 Academic Senate Chair and very proud and happy to be here. As many of you know, this is our opportunity uh, to kind of reconnect with each other and to meet new members of our campus community. And I want to remind any of the new faculty that we have special seating for you up in the first three rows. So if you're not already see, uh, seated up there, if you could just move up there, that will be great. And we look forward to uh, introducing you and meeting you later today. We have a very challenging uh, climate around the country, and so it's really great that we can support each other uh, by being here and being as collegial as possible and developing as many relationships on campus uh, as possible. And I would uh, like to thank those of you who forego a uh, trip to Oregon to see the uh, eclipse, which will be hitting any minute. And we'd like to thank the Physics and Astronomy Department for uh, being available out front to answer your questions and to kind of guide us through the eclipse and for providing uh, a link for us to uh, live stream for you. So I really appreciate that. Uh, I would like to encourage those of you who can to stop by Rosa Parks uh, rooms A through C after the event uh, to, for a little reception, grab some food, uh, meet some new friends, uh, reacquaint yourself with uh, some old friends. And uh, that's all I've got to say right now. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce our president, Dr. Leslie Wong, for a few opening remarks. Well, good morning, everyone. And, um, you know, I have two grandchildren at, at home right now, and when I left this morning, they gave me a special gift uh, for the day, because I've been telling them for two days, you can't look directly up, right? So they've got their glasses, and they wanted Grandpa to uh, be protected as well. Um, it really is a joy uh, when we get the, the year started. I'm so excited that you're all here. Welcome to the new faculty, staff, and the professionals that are on campus. Uh, I have a lot more remarks uh, at the end, not long, short, uh, but I really am honored to, to be the president here, to be part of all of you, to support your work uh, as we step into uh, 2017 and 2018. So please have a great time. Uh, if we have one of the most dynamic communities uh, on the university campus. Uh, take advantage of it, uh, and I just think we're going to have a terrific year. Thank you and welcome. Thank you very much, President Wong. So to start us off, we are going to present our Distinguished Faculty Awards. These awards are given out in the spring, and we have a nice ceremony in the Academic Senate, but we also like to honor them at this opening faculty meeting. We have awards for teaching, for scholarship, and for professional uh, achievement. These are going to be presented by our Aaron Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Jennifer Summit. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure and a great honor to present this year's Distinguished Faculty Awards. Celebrating exceptional achievements in teaching, professional development, and service, these awards recognize the three areas in which we expect all our faculty at San Francisco State to contribute and excel. Today we recognize four individuals who not only exemplify distinction in each of these areas, but also demonstrate the real innovation that's generated in the synergies among them. Their achievements confirm that at San Francisco State, the relationship between teaching and research at its very best is symbiotic, not oppositional for the best teachers infuse their classrooms with a spirit of discovery that drives their research. And accomplished researchers bring their work directly to students, inviting them to become co-creators of new knowledge. Both research and teaching share common ground with service, the sometimes unsung but most fundamental of all achievements in a shared government setting like ours. For through service, we recall and emphasize that we are not here for ourselves. Ask colleagues why they came to work at San Francisco State, and you won't hear selfish reasons. Instead, you'll hear that they came because they knew they had something important to give to their students, to their disciplines, to the broader mission of social justice that drives them and all of us. As we applaud the four colleagues whom we recognize today, we also celebrate and confirm the mission, commitment, and pride that lie at the heart of our community. 
The first is the Excellence in Teaching Award for tenured faculty, which this year goes to Pre Professor Federico Ardila from the Department of Mathematics in the College of Science and Engineering. Professor Ardila received his B BS and PhD in mathematics from MIT. He is an effective and admired teacher, a prolific scholar, and a tireless contributor to student development, both at San Francisco State and across the global mathematics profession. His accomplishments as a teacher include his work in the classroom, his mentoring activities, and his educational outreach. Professor Ardia, Ardila bases his teaching on the belief that everyone can have joyful, meaningful, and empowering mathematical experiences. He aims to create challenging, supportive, and equitable educational spaces where every participant knows that their contributions are valued and their full humanity is embraced. Student evaluations across a wide variety of courses attest to his overall teaching effectiveness, repeating many times over that Professor Ardila was, in the words of one, by far the best professor I've had thus far at San Francisco State. Professor Ardila's ability to create rich mathematical experiences for his students draws on the base of his exceptionally strong research program. He investigates objects in pure and applied mathematics by analyzing their underlying structure, and he's published 50 research papers, co-authoring more than 20 of them with students. He has been invited speaker at numerous national and international congresses and serves as editor-in-chief in the Journal of Combinatorial Theory. He also founded the San Francisco State Columbia Combinatorics Community in 2006 and hosts over 200 hours of graduate mathematics videos freely available online. Professor Ardila is strongly committed to helping build a diverse and equitable community of mathematicians. He has advised 40 thesis students, including 15 women and 30 members of underrepresented groups. He also co-directs the MSRI UP undergraduate research program for minor minority students at Berkeley. The recipient of numerous awards and accolades, including the NSF Career Award and the Diverse Issues in Higher Education Emerging Scholar Award, Professor Ardila exemplifies excellence in the teacher-scholar model. Please join me in recognizing Professor Federico Ardila as the 2016-17 Excellence in Teaching Award recipient for tenured faculty. Jennifer Reck from the Department of Sociology and Sexuality Studies in the College of Health and Social Sciences. Professor Reck received her BA in English and Sociology from the University of Redlands and her MA and PhD in Sociology from UC Santa Cruz. Dr. Reck began teaching in the Department of Sociology and Sexuality Studies in 2006 and was immediately recognized as an excellent communicator and rigorous instructor. She has high expectations of students, particularly around logical argument, sensitivity to data, and clarity in written expression. And students consistently praise her teaching prowess and rigor. Over the past 11 years, Dr. Reck has taught 12 different courses in sociology and sexuality studies and in child and adolescent development. And her teaching evaluations frequently reach scores of or near a perfect 1.0. Comments not only call her the best teacher ever, they frequently remark on her commitment to their learning. As one writes, she is the first instructor who sat down with me, went through my paper with me, and helped me see how I could make it better. And another writes, she helped me turn a research project into something I hope to publish, or at least use for graduate school. In addition to her formal teaching, Dr. Reck has contributed significantly to the curriculum 
co-designing and implementing a number of courses that play key roles in sociology's major. Please join me in recognizing Professor Jennifer Reck as the 2016-17 Excellence in Teaching Award recipient for Lecturer and Faculty. Professor Jonathan Stillman is receiving the Excellence in Professional Development Award. He's a professor in biology in COSI. Professor Stillman received his BS in Ecology, Evolution, and Behavior from the University of Minnesota and his PhD in Zoology from Oregon State. His research seeks to understand how marine organisms respond to environmental change focusing on evolutionary adaptation of intertidal organisms to shifts in environmental variation, such as we see with climate change. Since joining San Francisco State in 2005, Professor Stillman has mentored the research of over 30 graduate students and six postdoctoral fellows, publishing over 50 papers in peer-reviewed journals, many of which have student authors. He's received over $8 million in extramural funding and has been an author on over 100 presentations at national and international meetings, most of which are with student authors. He also regularly serves as an adjunct faculty at UC Berkeley. The impact of his work is reflected in the high citation rates that it receives. As one example, when the 90-year-old field-leading leading journal um, physiological and Biochemical Zoology listed the 90 most influential papers in its history. It listed two published by Dr. Stillman's lab at number six and number 11. Dr. Stillman serves on the editorial board of four major journals in his area of research. He acts as the program officer for the Society for Integrative and Comparative Biology, for which he's also served as secretary and he reviews manuscripts for over 30 different journals in his area. In addition, Dr. Stillman has provided significant service to his department, college, and university as an active committee, members, as a committee member. Please join me in recognizing Professor Jonathan Stillman as a 2016 Trevor Getz, the Department of History and the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Trevor Getz received his BA in History and Anthropology from the University of California, Berkeley, his MA in History from the University of Cape Town, South Africa, and his PhD in African History from the University of London. A member of the faculty at San Francisco State since 2002, 
Professor Getz currently serves as a professor and is chair of the Department of History. He's the author or editor of 10 published books, with two more forthcoming, and he is a dedicated teacher. His lasting contribution to San Francisco State in the area of service has been in shared governance, aimed at student success, learning, and achievement. As chair of the Academic Senate, co-chair of the University Strategic Planning Coordinating Committee, chair as Academic Policies Committee, chair of board of the University, of Cor University Corporation, and in dozens of other positions and committees, he has worked collaboratively to advance the mission of the university, to design and implement curriculum, and to provide resources and support to students and employees of the university. Most recently, he's led a multi-year faculty learning community as part of San Francisco State's Teagle Curriculum Redesign Initiative. He's collaborated to relaunch the student-led experimental college, and he's agreed to lead a campus task force on equity and inclusion. In proposing Professor Getz for the Distinguished Faculty Award for Service, one of his nominators summed up the high regard expressed by his peers. Quote, central to Trevor's approach is seeking common ground in what is, is, in, what is in, in the best interest of the campus community. He is a spirited and convincing advocate for students, and he endeavors to include student voices in deliberations. His other nominators offer praise in the same vein, writes one, I rank him among the top 1% of San Francisco State colleagues that I've ever had the pleasure to know and work with. Writes another, he has a unique style that blends kindness, intellect, passion, drive, and, and collaboration. Another praises his energy, enthusiasm, understanding, of his constituents and history of providing top quality experiences for students. And another sums up the spirit of this award in writing, quote, when I think about what it means to serve the university, I think of Dr. Trevor Getz as a model, a mentor, and an inspiration. Please join me in recognizing Professor Trevor Getz as the 2016-17 Excellence in Service Award. Dr. Carmen Domingo, who will serve as Interim Dean of the College of Science and Engineering and regrets sincerely that she cannot be here today because of a prior commitment that could not be altered. Dr. Domingo is an accomplished scholar and a dedicated teacher and mentor who's been a member of San Francisco State's biology department for 20 years. She received her BS from UC Irvine, her PhD from UC Berkeley in biology. Her research has focused on the cellular and molecular pathways underlying the development of embryos. She has played a key role in a number of COSI's important grants focused on supporting the success of students and faculty in STEM, including the NSF Advance and the San Francisco BUILD grants. She's widely admired for her collaborative leadership style, her commitment to innovation and research and teaching, and her deep understanding of COSI and San Francisco State. And Dr. Ramirez, I hope you'll take our good our goodwill to her. Yes. Next is Dr. Nancy Robinson serving as Interim Dean of the Graduate College of Education. 
Um, and we stepped into this role at the middle of last year, but we're not able to be recognized, and so we're doing so now. Dr. Robinson has taught at San Francisco State for many years. She received her MA from Portland State, her PhD from University of Washington. Her research focuses on developing interdisciplinary educational models to support individuals with disabilities and their families. She has served as Chair of Communicative Disorders, Associate Dean of the Graduate College of Education. She brings to her work as Interim Dean a strong commitment to her colleagues, her college, and the important mission to train and support the next generation of educators. Welcome. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Dr. Lolo Hong, Vice President of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management, to introduce the new administrators in her division. Thank you, Provost Summit. I'm only going to introduce the administrators who were able to join us today. And I think all of the Student Affairs and Enrollment Management colleagues are in the audience. So is it possible to get um, house lights up a little bit? There you go. All right, thank you. Um, so first, I'm delighted if I could ask our colleagues to stand as I introduce you, please. Um, Dr. Maria Martinez became Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management on August 2nd, following a rigorous national search. In her prior role, she served as University Registrar at California State Polytechnic University, Pomona, where she spent 14 years collaborating with various campus partners to improve administrative processes and student services to increase student retention and graduation rates. So welcome, Dr. Martinez. Next, I'd like to introduce um, first a new division that has been established here on campus with the support of the entire cabinet. Many of you have probably heard about the Division of Equity and Community Inclusion, which opens its doors this fall. Um, this new division will be responsible to lead, coordinate, implement, and evaluate a broad range of sustained programs, initiatives, events, and activities designed to facilitate intercultural, intergroup dialogue, promote equity and inclusion, advance social justice, and improve campus climate for all of our students. Two of our newest team members of this inaugural team have been able to join us today to be introduced. First, Dr. Siri McDougall III will begin as the Interim Director of the Black Unity Center. Many of you know Dr. McDougall because he's currently an Associate Professor in the Department of Africana Studies in the College of Ethnic Studies here at SF State. He's also the former Chair of the Department of Africana Studies. He will bring a wealth of knowledge, experience, dedication, and personal commitment to this new role. So please join me in congratulating him. <laughs> the next individual will also not be a complete stranger. Ami Zanzali Barnes will begin as the Interim Director of Diversity and Student Equity. Ms. Barnes has served as the Interim Executive Director of Associated Students here at SF State since December 2014. Her affinity for student affairs and student learning has grown over the last 18 years in her service in auxiliary services, during which she has served as the program development officer, the first director of the Richard Oaks Multicultural Center, and assistant director of program services for the Cesar Chavez Student Center. I know that the AS will miss her, but we are delighted that Ami has decided to continue her journey with us here at SF State in this new role. Welcome. Last but certainly not least, I'm excited to introduce a new team member who will be joining or has been part of equity programs and compliance. This is the office that is responsible to ensure that we um, implement Executive Orders 1095, 96, and 97 in support of Title IX and discrimination, harassment, retaliation guidelines. Dr. Christina Savi, former chair of the Communication Studies Department and director of the Conflict Resolution Certificate Program, joined Equity Programs and Compliance as its inaugural dean of equity initiatives as of July 1st. 
Dr. Sabi, in her role, will serve as the Senior Deputy Title IX Coordinator and Discrimination, Harassment, and Retaliation Administrator for faculty, staff, and third parties. She will be responsible for taking complaints and making sure that they are dealt with in a caring, compassionate, and timely manner. She will also serve as an ombudsperson for faculty and staff, and I'd like to thank particularly Faculty Affairs, Human Resources, and the Academic Senate, who are partners in advancing this particular initiative. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Sabi to the campus in this new role. And with just wishing everyone uh, best wishes for the Happy New Year, and now I'd like to introduce uh, our next colleague, Vice President Robert Nava, who oversees University Advancement, introduce his team members. Thank you. Thank you, VP Hong. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias, estimados colegas. Buenos dias. Yeah, let's give me some. <laughs> You know, this, uh, this morning, I, I did want to say to, to our new faculty, also a special welcome uh, to, to our new faculty. I have the privilege of, of leading the University Advancement Division here at San Francisco State. And I have an extraordinary opportunity to work with a very dynamic, high-performing team. And faculty, I want you to know that the purpose of advancement, the reason we exist on this campus, is to support our faculty. And we do it in three primary ways. One, we engage in marketing and strategic communications. We want to tell the world the great teaching and research that our faculty do. The second item, we raise money through development. And we have an extraordinary group that does this to raise resources for endowed positions, programmatic support, and scholarships for our students. And the third area is that we engage over 200,000 alumni all over the world through our Alumni and Constituent Relations Office. So to our faculty, and especially to our new faculty colleagues, please know that we're here to support you. I have the privilege of acknowledging three really extraordinary colleagues that I get to work with. Our first colleague is our Associate Vice President of Development and Campaign and that is Mark Kelleher. Mark, would you please stand? <laughs> that would be two and a half years ago with the support of our president and our provost and, and deans, we launched our very first comprehensive campaign, Bold Thinking, the campaign for San Francisco State, and our goal is to raise $150 million by 2020 and we are close to 70 million that's been raised thus far. And this is just one example of the work that we do. I would also like to acknowledge and introduce a colleague that's been with us actually over a year, but she was not introduced last year. And this is our Associate Vice President for Marketing and Strategic Communications. And she and her team tell the story of our faculty and our students. Elizabeth Smith, would you please stand? I was talking about engaging our donors and alumni, right? But our, our most generous donor right now is the state of California and the legislature. And last year we were able to, to hire an excellent colleague with wonderful state and federal relations experience both at UC San Diego, had also worked in the Clinton White House, and had also led and been involved with a major nonprofit organization leading uh, environmental uh, initiatives. I'd like to uh, introduce Dominique Kana Soko, our executive director of our, our, our executive director of governmental and community relations. Thank you. And we have another turn it over to my, my good friend and colleague, Ann Sherman, interim vice president of fiscal affairs and administrative affairs. Ann. Those of you who wonder what exactly does administration and finance do, we do everything else. <laughs> so uh, we don't do the academics, we don't do the students, we don't raise money, we help you spend it and account for it, among other things. So I have two um, 
members of my team that I would like to introduce to you today. Um, both of them have been here for an extended period of time, but they're in enhanced roles. And I want to give them recognition for the uh, commitments that they've made for several years and the additional um, role that they will now be playing. The first is Jay Orendorf. Jay's right here in the center. Jay has served a variety of roles on the campus, and he's the go-to guy for many people, one of those boundary-spanning roles that cuts across the various cabinet areas and helps to ensure that we are all working collaboratively and aligned in our efforts. He has been promoted recently to take on not just the risk and uh, analytics that he's been doing for several years, but also our procurement group. So if you want to buy something, Jay's the guy to talk to. And also our employee health and safety team. It's a really good combination of his um, talents, and I know that it will make a big impact on the way that we work forward on several of our big initiatives. The second person I'd like to introduce today is Jenny Valdez Patino. <laughs> Jenny was, uh, was named in January as our Executive Director of Housing, Dining, and Conference Services. Uh, if you noticed a little bit of activity on campus this weekend, that was Jenny and her team moving in about 4,000 students. So we appreciate her contributions over the last several years in our housing department and look forward to see how we move forward developing new housing, not just for our students, but also for faculty and staff. Thank you both for contributing your talents to our team. And with that, it is my pleasure now to move into the most exciting portion of the agenda, budget. I was talking with my parents on the phone this morning, as I do every day, and my mom said, you should, you should make a joke about budgets. And I said, Mom, budgets are not a joking matter. <laughs> no way. So um, what I'm going to do is give you some highlights of our budget. Uh, for those of you on the stage, the presentation is behind you. <laughs> so the first thing that um, I want to talk about is the fact that, as um, Robert noted, the state of California is one of our biggest donors. We're not going to have a budget behind me. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the incremental funding that we got for the CSU this year. Um, the CSU as a whole had asked the state of California for $343.7 million in additional dollars. We were actually given $202.2 million. Uh, the most um, of that money is dedicated toward enrollment growth, uh, but we were also given funds for um, sort of mandatory expenses things like uh, salary increases through the contract negotiations, as well as our increased benefit costs. Uh, as we think about our leadership priorities for San Francisco State, uh, we are focused um, on our budget with regard to how do we support student success and graduation? Um, how do we ensure that the students coming in are able to succeed and persist to graduation? And how do we ensure that our transfer students come in and achieve their goals as quickly as they foresee. The second goal for us from the budget office was transparency. We spent a lot of time and energy last year helping to ensure that more people understood how our budget worked, and we are continuing that effort in the next several years. Two additional things with real art to the budget are all funds budgeting, so we're not talking only about our general fund monies, but also where do we get any revenue stream, and multi-year budgeting. How do we look at what we've spent in the last, now, three years? Um, what are we anticipating for this upcoming year? And what do we forecast for the year ahead? Finally, we're looking at ways in which we can reduce any redundancies or um, cost overlaps between various areas. We believe that there are still efficiencies to be found in ways that do not significantly and negatively impact our users. So as we think about our funding highlights for this year, as we move into San Francisco State's element of the state budget and the CSU allocation. We're focused on enrollment. We're focused on our student graduation initiatives. We're looking at ensuring that we have sufficient money to maintain a balanced budget, that we are using one-time money from our carry forward funds to fund major projects that we couldn't do on an annual basis. And we are looking at ensuring that we have enough capital for our major projects which include the Campus Master Plan, 
our new uh, broadcast and electronic communications building, and our facilities and deferred maintenance. That includes things like things you don't even think about, like under the ground, our piping and our water supplies and our sprinkler systems and things like that. As we think about our budget as a whole, one of the things that we've been thinking about is where are we with regard to our enrollment numbers? And the assumption that we've made is that we're still looking to be about 4% below our enrollment targets um, given to us from the CSU. That is a conservative estimate because we know that our friends in student affairs and in academic affairs have worked hard to ensure that we have enrollment that is closer to our target for the CSU. But we want to be conservative in this rather than say, hey, how oh, excellent, everything's perfect here. For us in our division, we're the conservative ones and we think about ways to ensure that our risk is mitigated and that we have enough money to do what needs to be done for our campus. This year, a surprising fact is that of our mandatory costs, it was our dental that went up more than anything else rather than health. That, I think is the first time I've ever seen that in about 20 years of doing this kind of work. We did get a number of one-time dollars um, this year from the state and allocated through our CSU system. Um, and those one-time dollars are used for very specific things that are pertinent, most especially for academic affairs for research and creative scholarly works, for academic preparation for our students in English and math, to help ensure that we've got good data-driven decision-making and understand our financial models, to look at course redesign, faculty development, and other curriculum or instruction-related activities, to ensure that we have our graduation initiatives for 2025, not just the Student Success Graduation Initiative on an annual basis. And last but not least, our Robert Tiburon Center has been granted $2.1 million from the Chancellor's Office to help ensure that our seismic issues there are addressed. When we think about our overall operating fund, we have a total budget of about $535 million. Is that shocking to you? Half a billion dollars. Um, 366 of that is actually in our general fund. And the other things come from our trust funds and our auxiliary services and various grants or contracts and campus partnerships. When we have the responsibility to be good stewards of that, we think about ways in which we can dedicate those dollars most appropriately to ensure that we are meeting the objectives that I listed earlier. For this year, our emphasis on our additional funding from the state is geared toward our campus mandatory costs, the retirement contributions that are required through CalPERS, the graduation initiatives for 2025, and financial aid for our students, which has been increased as a result of the increase in tuition. When we look at our campus budgets and the state general fund money, 70% of that is given and awarded to academic affairs, as is appropriate given our emphasis and mission. When we think about ways in which we use that general fund money for campus-wide efforts, the bulk of that is given to our benefits programs. It is one way in which we can ensure that we are not only recruiting, but retaining key talent across the Bay Area Three projects that I want to particularly call attention to this year is our Mashoop Wellness Center. And I warmly encourage all of you as faculty and staff to come visit during the open house for faculty and staff tomorrow morning from 9 to noon. The Mashoop Wellness Center will open officially to the campus on Wednesday. It is budgeted at $86 million and this project came in in budget. It's a state-of-the-art fitness facility it is LEED Platinum, and it has been funded through a student referendum for many years now, and through student fees for the next future, through its payoff. This is an amazing institution and an amazing building, which helps to reinforce the fundamental components that we have that is not just learning, but also the full student experience that creates a positive and successful outcome. Our second project is the Creative Arts Replacement Building that I noted earlier. This is budgeted at $81 million, 
construction will start next fall, and it is jointly funded both by our campus and the CSU. It will be a state-of-the-art broadcast and electronic communication arts building and is estimated to be four stories high. Our last building is our Holloway Student Housing Building. It will be eight stories. The bottom two floors will be mixed use of retail and um, administrative type offices. And this building is funded through a public-private partnership, the first one that we've had here on the campus. It will be operated by a third-party group and offer us 516 additional beds for the students that we currently have on our extended wait lists. Campus will be providing the residential life housing for that, and we are looking forward to having a very vibrant and dynamic small group uh, community right across from the current administration building. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and turn it over to Nancy Bidler. Thank you. Thank you to all, thank you to all the VPs and uh, VP Sherman, I would like to apologize to you for the computer glitch. Uh, apparently our Windows computer decided it was time to do an update and uh, did so. So that was what was going on. Uh, so if we could get the lights on uh, again, we have several uh, sets of introductions to do here, and if uh, each of you can please stand when you're introduced. So first of all, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I'm a little lacking in the height, uh, height, height there. Okay. So first, it's my great pleasure to introduce the 2017-2018 uh, Senate, Academic Senate Executive Committee. Uh, not everyone can be here today, but for those of you who are, again, if you could please stand up and be recognized. First, we have Vice Chair Teddy Albiniak from the Department of Communication Studies. We have Secretary of the Senate, Laura Lizzie Wagner from the Department of History. Not able to be, oh, or sorry, one person that is able to be here. Uh, from the Academic Policies Committee, these are our standing uh, committee chairs. We have the Academic Policies Committee, Jackson Wilson. He's from the Department of Education. <laughs> Next, uh, not able to be with us today, we have the Chair of the Curriculum Review and Approval Committee, Jeannie Stowers from the Public Administration Program. We'll give her a clap and extension. <laughs> From the faculty, the chair of the Faculty Affairs Committee is Todd Rohrman from the Department of Theater and Dance. <laughs> also not able to be here with us today is the chair of the Student Affairs Committee, Amy Williams from the Student Health Center. <laughs> and our last standing committee chair is the chair of the Strategic Issues Committee, Sheldon Jem, also from Public Administration. In addition, we have uh, members uh, that were elected to the executive committee at, at large. Uh, the first of these is Dylan Mooney from the College of Health and Social Sciences. <laughs> and Jerry Shapiro from the School of Social Work. <laughs> Next, we are proud to have three statewide academic senators uh, serving on our executive committee. Uh, these three senators not only put in a lot of hard work here on our campus, but they travel regularly to Long Beach to help represent us uh, in our statewide academic senate. So we really appreciate their service. First, we have Darlene E. Melikar from the Department of Gerontology. We have Robert Keith Collins from the Department of American Indian Studies. And last but not least, our very newest senator, Dependra Sinha, from the School of Engineering. <laughs> and last but not least, um, we have the prior chair of the Academic Senate, who also serves on the ex Executive Committee, so I'd like to recognize Troy Carlton, the Associate Dean of Liberal and Creative Arts. <laughs> uh, thank you all very much for your service. Uh, 
Our next uh, section of the agenda is to introduce our new faculty um, by unit head. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start down the line and each of them is going to come up. We're hopefully going to have our projection here so you'll get to see the faces of our new faculty. But if the new faculty, if you're here, if you could please stand up while you're being introduced, that would be wonderful. So it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the athletic director, Charles Guthrie, to introduce the new um, faculty members from athletics. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Great service. Good morning, everyone. I mean, that doesn't sound like a gate of cheer. We got to get fired up here. Good morning. All right, that's more like it. Well, I'm here to introduce two uh, faculty members that are just starting with our program. And before I do that, I just want to thank all the faculty in the room because our student athletes fall and spring, 3.2 GPAs of the department. So let's give them a hand. I know we have one team below 3.0, so, you know, when you see a basketball team go 25 and six, make the NCAA tournament, you think, okay, but they were over 3.0 as, as, a, as a program. So we're excited about not only the competitive success, but the uh, pursuit of academic excellence, and we'll continue doing that. And when I started about three years ago, I mentioned that you know, I won't see any, we won't see any professional athletes probably come out of San Francisco State. We've had a marvelous run competitively, and I can tell you today, no pro athletes. So what that means is our staff and our team has to be committed to our student athletes graduating and placing them in great career opportunities. So we're committed to that. And all you faculty, if you need any help or you have any questions, we're always open. Our doors are open. I want to thank Dr. Jerry Shapiro for serving at Zafar this year. He's going to be a great asset to be a liaison to the faculty. And also a big shout out to Mr. Dr. Trevor Getz as serving as our fall of the past year. So we're really fortunate to have those two gentlemen involved in our program and the academic advising team. They've been around our shop. Thank you very much. So we're committed to that. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce two faculty members that joined us. First, we'll start off with Christina Danella. Can we stand? <laughs> Christina comes to us from Caldwell College in New Jersey, and she's the new women's basketball head coach. We're excited about what she brings to the table. She graduated from Marist uh, College back in New York, and she was an all-star academically and athletically. And we're really excited about her being a great mentor for our young ladies this upcoming season. Welcome, Christina. Our next faculty member is Alicia Reed. Well, she comes from the rival Humboldt State. And Alicia is a CSU graduate, and has been around the CSU for quite a long time, and she's very familiar with the CSU. She worked at Humboldt State for about five years, and we're really excited because she's been to the College World Series like two out of the last three years in softball, so we brought that magic down here. So we're excited for Alicia Reed. Now I'd like to turn over the podium to my esteemed colleague, the Dean of the Business School, Linda Oubre. Doctor. new faculty from the College of Business for sitting up front so I don't have to search for you in the lights. Um, but please join me in welcoming the new tenure track faculty for the College of Business. Also bear with me, I just noticed my list is not in alphabetical order. So, um, Rex Chung, stand up please, Rex. <laughs> Dr. Chung earned his PhD in statistics from UC Davis. He joins the Decision Sciences Department and will teach statistics for business. He has worked for the Department of Homeland Security prior to joining SF State. His most recent research interest is in structural break detection and model selection in statistical models, and that's a mouthful. So welcome. <laughs> Ian, uh, Ian received his PhD from Temple University. He will teach society, sustainable business, and the management department. His research interests include entrepreneurship, innovation, financial inclusion, environmental policy, and geospatial technology. Welcome, Ian. <laughs> Nara Dion. Nara? Nara joins the management department and will teach business policy and strategic management. She earned her PhD from Washington State University. Her research interests include corporate social responsibility, corporate governance, 
conformance and defiance, and reputation and legitimacy. Welcome, Nara. <laughs> Dee Fond Lee Dee Fond? earned her PhD in accounting from UC Irvine. She'll teach financial accounting in the Department of Accounting. Her research interests include accounting information systems and financial reporting, financial disclosures, and peer effects. Welcome. Um, Stuart received his PhD in Industrial Engineering and Operations Research from UC Berkeley. He joins the Department of Decision Sciences and will teach operations management courses and continue his research in supply chain management and data-driven optimization. Veronica Rabello, this is where it might be out of order. Oh, perfect. Veronica. <laughs> Veronica joins from the Department of Management. She earned her PhD in Psychology and Women's Studies from the University of Michigan. Her research interests include social identity, mistreatment, mindfulness, and compassion in the workplace. Welcome, Veronica. <laughs> Jonathan Kim received his PhD from UC Berkeley. He will teach financial accounting in the Department of Accounting. His research areas of expertise include capital markets, earnings management, and earnings quality. Prior to joining SF State, Jung Hoon taught at Florida International University, was a business executive for many years. Welcome. <laughs> Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith earned his doctoral degree in, in hotel and tourism management from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. He'll teach restaurant operations in the hospitality and tourism management department. While in Hong Kong, Ryan worked on multiple consultancy projects taught executive development programs, and spoke at international conferences. And I'll just add, we expect him to bring a special touch to the Vista Room. Welcome. <laughs> Avu. Good morning. And Avu joins the Department of Information Systems after earning his PhD from Claremont Graduate University. His research interests include information analytics and healthcare and data science. He will teach information systems for management in fall 2017. Welcome. <laughs> and last but not least, Chris Yosbrin. Chris, Chris earned his PhD from Texas A&M University. He joins our Department of Finance where he will teach international finance and pursue his research interests in asset pricing and financial economics. Welcome, Chris. I would now like to introduce Nancy Robinson, our Interim Dean of the Grad School of Education. Thank you, Linda. I'm really pleased to be able to introduce the new, new faculty joining the Graduate College of Education. The Graduate College of Education prepares educators who work in the areas of infancy all the way to working with folks who are elderly, the broad spectrum of education across the lifespan. Our new faculty are really representative of this spectrum. I'm very pleased to welcome you to San Francisco State and to the Graduate College of Education community. Just want to make sure I look, not me. Uh, our first, our first um, faculty member, please stand. Marissa Kutzkar. <laughs> Welcome, Marissa. Marissa joins the Graduate College of Education Department of Special Education and Communicative Disorders as an assistant professor in early childhood special education. She just completed her doctorate her dissertation at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and has moved here to San Francisco, and will teach in early childhood special education. Her special areas include social skills research, family involvement, and inclusive practices for all learners. So welcome, Rosa. of Education Equity, Leadership Studies, and Instructional Technology, we welcome Irina Grimchuk. There you are. You can 
this one? Yeah. Okay. Irina joins us as an assistant professor um, in the area of educational administration. She'll be teaching for future administrators to lead educational systems. Her background in, is a PhD from the University of California, Davis, in social organization and policy. She's done extensive teaching and research. She joined us as a, with a broad experience um, in K-12 school organization, policy, and school finance. Her focus is also on language minority children, English language learners, marginalized students, and has done lots of, she's done extensive research that involves students in pre-service and in-service teachers. So welcome to Irina. Department of Special Education and Communicative Disorders as an assistant professor in the area of mild and moderate disabilities, and also known as learning disabilities. And her recent completion of her doctorate through the PhD program, the joint doctoral program in special education with San Francisco State and UC Berkeley. Her area of study is in early literacy, parent and community engagement, and she's taught in special education extensively. So we really uh, welcome you in. Your experience and your rich background will lead our teachers to the future. So thank you. <laughs> I'd like to introduce my colleague, Kenneth Montero from the College of Ethnic Studies. Thank you, Dean Robinson. Good morning, San Francisco State community. With only a few words allocated, but with infinite enthusiasm, the nation's first and only College of Ethnic Studies welcomes two new talented scholars. <laughs> to the hundreds of equally talented colleagues that they've been looking forward to meet. They send their deepest regrets because neither could attend this morning for different reasons. First, Eric Marr, Assistant Professor of Asian American Studies, earned his Juris Doctorate from New College of California. He was an adjunct faculty member in the college between 1992 to 2008 when he was elected to serve the Richmond District here in San Francisco on the county, city and county board of supervisors. He now describes himself as a recovering politician after serving <laughs> eight years on the school board in eight years <laughs> supervisor. His areas of scholarly interest are listed on the slide, and he would uh, want me to emphasize that at the core of his interest is analyzing and implementing models of people-powered public policy making. And that alliteration was a little hard, but he wanted to make sure I got that. Second, Dr. Maria Quintana, Assistant Professor of Latina Latino Studies, earned her PhD from the University of Washington with a focus on United States and Latin American history, uh, particularly early 1900s. She comes most recently from a position of postdoctoral associate at the Center for the Study of Race, Indigeneity, and Transnational Migration at Yale University. Her areas of academic expertise in US Latin America as a comparative studies, are, are there listed, and they're reflected in their most recently submitted uh, manuscript in the Western Historical Quarterly, Securing Labor, the Tolan Committee Hearings, Mexican Labor Importation and the Incarceration of Japanese Americans, 1941 to 1942. She's passionate about social justice for migrant workers and looks to build university community connections for students to have the opportunity to have hands-on collaborations on these issues. Though in, um, though in different uh, departments, these two new hires continue to strengthen the college's leadership in labor and immigrant rights. Individually and collectively, they will contribute to transformative change in our college and in our San Francisco State Village. Um, Dr. Quintana has also uh, allowed me to share that as she was preparing to come here moving, she also gave birth to our newest ethnic studies baby in the family. So please 
Please welcome, in absentia, but please welcome the College of Ethnic Studies' newest additions to the San Francisco State family. And I'd like to relinquish the, the microphone to my friend and colleague, Dean Alpires. Thank you, Ken. Good morning, everybody. In about an hour, that coffee should have kicked in by now. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, the mission of the College of Health and Social Sciences is to help our students solve the most pressing and enduring issues confronting the well being of individuals, families, and communities. And today, I'm very pleased to introduce you to five faculty who will help carry out that mission. First up is Dr. Amy Dort. Amy, could you stand, please? Amy comes to the Department of Family, Interiors, Nutrition, and Apparel, but the most important thing you need to know about Amy is she's actually, this is a homecoming for her because Amy is not only a cyclone from Iowa State University, she is a longtime Gator and she graduated with her bachelor's and master's from the very same program. So Amy, welcome home. Amy's interests are in the applications of technology in apparel design and merchandising, specifically things like wearable technology, 3D printed textiles, and mass customization. But the most fun and interesting thing we found out about Amy is that she is a competitor. In fact, she competed on the Iowa State University's ballroom dance team called the Cyclone Ballroom. Is that right? Got it. She was willing to admit that. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Dr. Carol Kulik. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Kulik could not join us. Uh, she had a family uh, urgency to attend to. But let me take a moment to honor uh, Carol and what she brings to the School of Nursing. Dr. Kulik joins the School of Nursing with more than 25 years of clinical experience as an advanced practice nurse and clinical leader in addition to executive leadership. She earned her doctor in nurse practice at the University of San Francisco and her clinical experience focuses on critical care, surgery, cardiology, and transplant. Please join me in welcoming Carol. <laughs> Next up in the Department of Physical Therapy, I'd like to introduce Dr. Casey Nesbitt. Casey, <laughs> Dr. Nesbitt joins the Department of Physical Therapy with two doctorates, one in Rehabilitation Sciences from the University of Oklahoma, as well as a Doctor of Physical Therapy from Merrimack University. She is an American Physical Therapy Association board certified pediatric clinical specialist. Her research interests are in the areas of adolescent obesity, narrative reasoning, international physical therapy, and cultural aspects of perceptions of disability. She focuses her clinical practice at UCSF, UCSF's Benioff's Children's Hospital in Mission Bay, as well as a rural hospital in Malawi, Africa. When she is resting from all those activities, uh, she is also running ultra marathons. Uh, I don't really know how far that is, but that certainly sounds further than my 10,000 steps. So, <laughs> go you. Next up, I'd like to introduce Dr. Molly Shea. Molly, if you stand for <laughs> Dr. Shea is joining the Department of Child and Adolescent Development. Previous to this, she graduated from the University of Colorado at Boulder with a PhD in Learning Sciences and Human Development. Her work is focused at the nexus of research and practice in the study of human-centered design interventions created to interrupt social and environmental injustice. Most recently, she has investigated how community educators, often parents from the neighborhood or former after-school participants, work to create an equity-oriented pedagogy in an after-school program for young people underrepresented in STEM fields. The most interesting fact that we found out about Molly, apart from her research skills, is that since the third grade, it was her job to warm the fire, start a fire in her cabin for her sisters 
uh, each day prior to school. Um, the college does pay its bills, so I hope you don't have to start any fires or anything. We have heat, but welcome Molly. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Emiko Takagi. Emiko, would you stand, please? Emiko comes to us from Towson University, where she was an associate professor in gerontology. She received her PhD in sociology from the University of Southern California. Her research interests are focused on older adults' social support and well-being, examining issues such as intergenerational family relationships, informal and formal caregiving, and loneliness and social isolation in later life. She has explored these issues both within the U.S. and in global contexts, particularly in Japan, the country with the highest life expectancy in the world. On the offside, she also loves to go hiking and running, and I would invite you to try to keep up with Dr. Nesbitt. <laughs> At this point then, uh, join me in welcoming the five new faculty within the College of Health and This moment, it's my uh, pleasure and honor to invite to the podium my friend and colleague, uh, Dean Andrew Harris, who will introduce the new faculty in the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Andy. Thank you, Dean Alvarez. It is my great honor to introduce the incoming faculty in the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, the College of Ideas. First, Libby Black. Libby Black joins our School of Art as an assistant professor. She teaches painting and drawing, received her MFA from California College of the Arts, and comes to us from CalArts and Sonoma State. Welcome, Libby. <laughs> By the way, I'm not going to turn around and see if any of these slides are out of order, so someone give me a heads up or just let it go. Uh, May Lee Chai. May Lee. May Lee Chai joins our creative writing department as an assistant professor. She will teach and write fiction, creative nonfiction, and literary translation. She received her MFA from SF State and comes to us most recently from the University of North Carolina at, Wil at Wilmington. Welcome home, May Lee. <laughs> Nicholas Conway. Nick Conway joins our political science department as an assistant professor. He teaches public law and judicial politics, received his PhD recently from Texas A&M, and wrote on the modern disappearance of civil trials. Welcome, Nick. <laughs> Christoph Hansman. Chris? Can't see anything here. Well, we'll clap for him anyways. Chris Hansman joins our Women and Gender Studies Department as an assistant professor. He teaches medical sociology and feminist science, recently received his PhD from UC San Francisco, writing on the emergence of trans health in its clinical and political context. Welcome, Chris. Mary Hulick. Mary Hewlett joins our School of Design as Associate Professor and Director of the School. She, worked on, she works on information design and user experience, received her MFA from Northwestern University, and comes to us most recently from the Cleveland Institute of Art. Welcome, Mary. <laughs> Persis Karim. Persis, I believe, is somewhere where she can see the eclipse, which is anywhere but here. <laughs> Persis joins our Comparative and World Literature Department as professor and as the inaugural holder of the Neto Novari Chair in Iranian Diaspora Studies. She works in Iranian and Iranian Diaspora Literature, received her PhD from the University of Texas at Austin, and comes to us from San Jose State University. Welcome, Persis. <laughs> Anthony Punk.
Anthony Punk joins our International Relations Department as an assistant professor. He works on international social movements and political economy, receives his PhD from the University of Minnesota, and comes to us from St. Olaf College. Welcome, Anthony. <laughs> David Pena Guzman. David? David Pena Guzman joins our School of Humanities and Liberal Studies as an assistant professor. He works on philosophy of science, animal studies, and fem feminist theory, received his PhD from Emory University, and comes to us most recently from Johns Hopkins University. Welcome, David. <laughs> Elizabeth Ramirez Soto. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Ramirez Soto joins our School of Cinema as an assistant professor. She works on Latin American, documentary, and transnational cinema, received her PhD from the University of Warwick, and comes to us most recently from the University of Valparaiso. Welcome, Elizabeth. <laughs> Meredith Reif Schneider. Meredith. Meredith joins our anthropology department as an assistant professor. She works on historical archaeology and the history of medicine and healthcare, and recently received her PhD from Stanford <coughs> University. Welcome, Meredith. <laughs> we welcome you all with pride and with promise. It is my honor now to invite university librarian Debbie Masters to the podium. librarian and will serve as the liaison to the departments of chemistry and biochemistry, earth and climate sciences, mathematics, physics and astronomy, and the School of Engineering. In addition to his master's in library science, he has two other master's degrees, a master of science in science journalism from Boston University and a master of science in astronomy from our sister institution, San Diego State. He came to us, comes to us, from the University of Miami, where he was a librarian and associate professor of physical sciences, mathematics, and engineering. His research interests include public science communication and information literacy, bibliometrics, and open access and author's rights. Prior to his role as a librarian, he was a science journalist with news and review pieces, feature articles, scripts, book reviews, and other publications and presentations for media and television and radio programs. He was also a researcher for popular science and discover magazines and for other science and space television programs. He serves as a peer reviewer for practical academic librarianship, the International Journal of the Special Libraries Association Academic Division, and also for issues in science and technology librarianship, a quarterly publication of the science and technology section of the Association of College Research Libraries. He just completed a term as chair of the Science and Technology Division of the Special Libraries Association, during which he organized programming at the annual conference, moderated panel and roundtable sessions, and curated the All Sciences poster session. Please welcome Bill. Our second tenure track faculty member is Jason Bachet. Jason joins us at the rank of Senior Assistant Librarian, which is the equivalent of Assistant Professor. He will serve as the Cataloging and Metadata Coordinator in the library and will continue as the Liaison to the School of Music. In addition to his Master's in Library and Information Science, he has a Master's in Music History from San Francisco State. He's been an Assistant Librarian Lecturer in the library since March of 2011 with responsibilities in cataloging, electronic journal access, and serving as the library faculty liaison to the School of Music. His research interests and academic expertise including, include authority control, which is not to say he wants to run what I do. It's using specific controlled vocabularies to provide consistency and improve discoverability 
of authors, subject terms, and the way you search for information in a catalog or a database. He also has expertise in music cataloging and music genre and form classification. Among his professional accomplishments here at San Francisco State is he was a library faculty lecturer representative to the Academic Senate, member of the Strategic Issues Committee from 2012 to 2015, and served as chair of that committee from 2014 to 15. Please welcome Jason. And now it's my honor to introduce the acting dean of the College of Science and Engineering, Robert Ramirez. Hello. I'm very pleased to be here, and I'm also very pleased to introduce the five new faculty in the College of Science and Engineering. However, I'm going to digress a little bit. By the end of my presentation, there will be 39 new faculty members at this university. And one population that we also have to recognize are the search committees and the staff who really help make this a successful recruitment year. Thank you. So, Dr. Sarah Baguskas. Uh, Sarah will join. Sarah will join San Francisco State as an assistant professor in geography and environment. Sarah is a biogeographer who is broadly interested in how local climate variability impacts plant function and plant distribution. The focus of her research is to understand the influence of coastal fog on plant and water on plant water carbon relations in natural ecosystems such as forests and in managed settings found in agricultural and urban settings. For this, she will use field-based studies, controlled experiments, and spatial analyses to address research questions spatially and over time. She especially looks forward to engaging undergraduate students in her research. Sarah received a doctoral degree in geography from UC Santa Barbara and recently completed postdoctoral research at UC Santa Cruz. Welcome to Sarah. Jason Cantley. Jason will be one of two new assistant professors in the biology department. Jason received his PhD in botany at the University of Hawaii Manoa and performed postdoctoral research at Bucknell University in Pennsylvania, a primarily undergraduate institution of about 3,600 students. In science, this would be a daring choice. However, this is one in which he was very successful and also one that reflects his commitment to undergraduate education and research. Jason also considers himself a biogeographer, so you and Sarah should get together. Um, his research focuses on evolutionary adaptations that were uh, integral to several plant lineages that are found in the Australian monsoon and in Pacific Islands. While conducting his postdoctoral research, he actively mentored undergraduate students who are listed as co-authors in his publications and who are now pursuing successful graduate careers of their own. Jason is excited to bring his passion for undergraduate education San Francisco State University. Welcome, Jason. <laughs> Dr. Diana Sanchez. <laughs> Diana is an accomplished yoga instructor. And fortunately for San Francisco State, she is an expert psychologist and will be joining the faculty in the Department of Psychology in the area of industrial and organizational psychology. Diana completed her PhD at Colorado State University, where her published research has explored computer-based simulations and game-based environments as effective learning tools. She is currently examining the impact of immersive experiences on employee outcomes. Another of her publications examined the ways to move beyond inequality and diversity management in the workplace. And I'm certainly going to read that article. Uh, welcome, Diana. <laughs> Fatima Tiranipur. Uh -huh. 
Fatima received her PhD in electrical and computer engineering from the University of Connecticut in 2017, where she also received a dissertation award. During her doctoral studies, she also worked at the Center for Hardware Assurance, Security, and Engineering, Chase. She is the leading co-author and author in numerous peer-reviewed publications and book chapters. At SF State, her research will focus on hardware security and trust embedded in cyber physical systems, or CPS, and machine learning. Her appointment is of great importance to our students as we seek to promote the representation of women in engineering at San Francisco State and in the nation. Welcome, Fatima. Alejandro Vélez Melendez. Alejandro is originally from Colombia, where he obtained a bachelor's and a master's degree in science from Universidad de los Andes. Alejandro worked as a high school science teacher and a scuba dive instructor. Later, he obtained his PhD in ecology, evolution, and behavior from the University of Minnesota. He also pursued postdoctoral research at Purdue University and Washington University in St. Louis. His research will focus on understanding the neural basis for evolutionary change in sensory perception. At San Francisco State, this means a focus on behavioral, physiological, and anatomical studies to investigate the mechanisms, function, and evolution of animal communication systems. He will also contribute to the curriculum of the biology department by developing courses in sensory ecology and neural mechanisms of behavior. Bienvenido, Alejandro. Let's make sure we welcome our new faculty by providing support and the warmth of San Francisco State University. Thank you. Well, thank you very much to our deans for those wonderful introductions, and I would also like to offer my welcome to all of the new faculty. Uh, so now I'm going to welcome to the podium James Martell, who is our president of the SF State Chapter of the California Faculty Association. Thank you, President Wong, Provost Summit, Senate Chair Gerber, and all the faculty and staff who contributed to organizing this event. Colleagues and friends, welcome back. I want to make an especial welcome to new faculty who are joining us for the first time. You will find that you have joined a faculty with a strong sense of social justice and a commitment to fighting against racism and inequality, both in our community, our state, our country, and globally as well. As the newly elected chapter president for the San Francisco State of the California Faculty Association, I am committed to continuing that mission as well as to working to ensure the best possible working conditions for our faculty, our staff, and our students. As the semester begins here, we face many challenges, especially in the aftermath of Charlottesville and an ongoing assault against academic freedom on our campus as well as many other universities across the country. Just next weekend, a group of far-right protesters are planning to hold a march in Christie Field here in San Francisco, followed the next day by a march in Berkeley by a different far-right group. The CFA will be there in force, peacefully demonstrating to show our opposition to their cause. I want to spend a few minutes talking about what our chapter of the union and the CFA more generally does for our community. Perhaps first and foremost, working with the faculty from all 23 of our sister campuses of the CSU, we succeeded in our fight for five, getting the faculty a significant raise, the final installment of which you may have noticed in your last paychecks. Yes. <laughs> Bargaining is already beginning for the next contract, which, and our current ex uh, contract expires on June 30th of next year. We will work to protect our pensions and benefits, raise our salaries, and protect academic freedom and the work environment, which benefits not only ourselves, but our students. As we like to say in the union, our working conditions are the students' learning conditions, and we're all in this together. Membership and participation in the union are two of the most important things that we do in our chapter. I and our CFA field rep, Maureen Lochran, were just at the new faculty orientation on Tuesday, so I met many of you, although I can't see you right now. And I'm happy to say that many of you have already joined as members. We remain committed to having as high a percentage of membership as possible. 
This helps not only in terms of organizing, but also in terms of ensuring that new ideas, new and creative responses to our current political and economic climate are being continually generated from within our ranks. And especially because this is going to be a year of bargaining, we need to learn from our members what your concerns are so we can communicate them to the CFA bargaining team, which is actively bargaining as we speak. We are also and relatedly in the process of renewing our departmental representative system for both tenure, tenure track, and lecturers in order to ensure that communications with the membership goes both ways. The, department, the departmental rep system works to help us ensure that there is solidarity, transparency, and openness to new ideas and issues. This is truly all of our union, and when we work together, it becomes impossible to divide and conquer us. And if any of you are interested in becoming a departmental rep, either at the tenure, tenure track level or the lecturer level, please contact me or the CFA office, which is in 331 HSS. And also, if you're just interested in participating in the union more generally, not just as a member, but to be more active, please talk to us. We're always looking for people to join us in our struggle. Another critical thing that the union does is to defend individual faculty members when they are subject to discipline or have a grievance or problem with their working conditions that might lead to a grievance. The faculty rights panel is a critical part of the union, providing an important service for the faculty. I truly hope that none of you ever have to use its services, but if you do, you'll be very glad that it exists. The faculty rights panel is part of the way that we are committed to our membership and to the larger academic community at all levels, from global struggles for social justice to working with individuals on their particular issues. And in addition, the union hosts many events that benefit its members and the larger academic community. We're going to be having a social event in the next couple of weeks and our first membership meeting in early October, the times, dates, and locations of which will be announced very soon. These events are a way for our membership and those who are curious about the union and what it does to come meet us and talk to us. I also want to briefly talk about some of the pressing issues that face us as a union and an academic community. I already mentioned the issue of academic freedom. We are facing an unprecedented wave of assaults on faculty all over the country, and the union is a critical factor in protecting our faculty from future assaults. Just this spring, the union was able to restore a job to a lecturer at Cal State Fullerton, who got into a scuffle with right-wing students and was accused of hitting one of them. He was fired, but when the union took it to arbitration, it was proven that he hadn't engaged in anything resembling a fight and did not have any conscious intent to, harm any, to cause any harm to the students in question. This lecturer got their job back. I want to work with them. I want to work with the administration, and we were just talking about this the other day, of acting together to protect academic freedom. This is an area where we really can cooperate, and we will be stronger if we present a united front on this issue. Another issue that presses on us, and which is not unrelated to academic freedom, is the challenges posed to faculty by what can loosely be called neoliberalism. This is the application of economic principles to all manners of life, very much including academia. This process is far more advanced in some other countries like the UK and Australia than it is here, but I want to work to ensure that these aspects of academics where economic principles are not appropriate remain protected. A university is not like Google. We have different sets of principles and ways of doing things, and not all of them can be justified by economic principles, nor should they. But I don't want to end on a down note. I'm very excited to be with you here, even though we all missed the eclipse. Um, but we kind of saw it, so that's the good thing. I know that we're strong and we will remain so in the face of all the challenges that are, we are faced with. With strong and deep organizing, the union can accomplish so much, and I want to work with all of you to make sure that happens. And in parting, I want to do one quick community building act, which is called a union clap. It's very easy. I want everybody, including you guys, to join me in it. You don't have to be in the union. Um, what do you do is you clap very slowly at first and then get faster and faster. Okay? Ready? faculty and administrators. So my mind went back to when I was a new faculty sitting up here in the auditorium for the first time. Um, by the way, this was about 21 years ago, so it's been a while. But I looked around and looked up on the stage and realized that I only recognized one person, and that was the dean of my college, which is science and engineering. 
Uh, I have met some of the new faculty around me in a very short faculty uh, orientation. It was not nearly as uh, robust and uh, useful as it is now, but everyone else was a stranger. I had no idea what a provost did, and I had no idea why that person was a vice president of academic affairs. I didn't even know what academic affairs was. And what was the student affairs thing? And what did they do? And was advancement there to help me advance my career? I really didn't know. I felt very alone, and I felt very isolated. And then there were all the acronyms. I was apparently in a college nicknamed COSY. There were also colleges called BSS and HHS, both of which are gone now. Uh, I was supposed to care about FTE and FTES, even though I didn't know what those were. My appointment involved something called WTUs. And I was supposed to do 12 of those, but again, I didn't really understand what that meant. ORSP was supposed to help me with my research, but I wasn't sure how. I wasn't so sure who was supposed to help me with RTP, and apparently that involved something called a WPAF. <laughs> I didn't know what a bulletin was, other than a board, but students were supposed to use that to figure out what classes to take. Something called a DARS was supposed to help as well, but I didn't know how that worked either. Uh, I didn't know the graduation requirements, and I was actually supposed to be an advisor. I had no understanding what GE was, and what these things called segments, capital S by the way, were that all students were apparently supposed to complete, let alone help them pick classes out. That first year, I was honestly probably more of a hindrance than help to my advisees. I would like to point out, by the way, this was 1996. There was not much information on the internet. Uh, so any questions that students had of me, I had to look up by hand, or I had to use a phone call to call someone. Imagine that. Uh, usually a senior faculty in my department. And yes, we did use phones for things other than texting back in those days. But during that first year, I gained an appreciation of how difficult it can be for students to navigate the university. I've tried my best over the years not to lose that appreciation and to be sympathetic when students get frustrated with how difficult it can be to get things done. I'm sorry to say I'm not sure that things are a lot better 21 years later, but we are definitely trying our hardest. As I was listening to the speakers that first day so many years ago, my mind was mostly wandering to the classes I was going to teach the next day. I can't honestly say that I remember anything that was set up on the stage. Uh, I, sorry about that. Uh, I had been asked by my department to teach laboratory classes that have been taught for years. I'm a biochemist by training, as well as a new graduate offering. That latter class was something I was going to have to design from scratch, and I was overwhelmed to say the least. I wondered what my students would be like. Would they recognize my inexperience in the classroom? Like many new faculty, I had only ever been a teaching assistant in my prior uh, training. What did I actually know about teaching? I was teaching a biochemistry class, but my research had been in biophysics, and honestly, it had been years since I had taken any classes in those areas. I didn't really remember a whole lot. So how was I going to teach? Was I going to be able to sound like, uh, well, sound like I knew what I was talking about? I also hadn't received any training in my graduate work or postdoc that actually taught me how to develop a syllabus or a lesson plan or any of the other things that I would eventually figure out how to do. The advice I got from senior faculty was along the lines of, don't worry, you only have to stay one day ahead of them. Not ideal, but sometimes accurate. One thing I have learned about our students over the years is that their stories are incredibly rich and varied. I've learned not to make assumptions about them or their circumstances. Sometimes the student who suddenly stops coming to class isn't lazy or bored, or for some completely insane reason doesn't think chemistry is the single most fascinating subject on the planet, but rather was kicked out of their house and has no place to live. Or their car had broken down and they didn't have the money to fix it, and they live three hours away from campus using bus, muni, and or BART. I've certainly learned to never assume what our students are going through to actually be students here. Something I was told about our students was that they were primarily transfer students from community colleges. I was told that we had very few freshmen and basically we were a commuter campus. And it became obvious that at least in my department, most of our time, energy, and attention were spent with our upper division and our graduate students, and our freshmen were largely neglected. Well, guess what? Now we have lots of freshmen and there's an ever-increasing part of our student population. But this is a very large university, and we do not change quickly. So our structures and our processes and our policies are much better suited to one uh, that is a transfer institution rather than one with a significant freshman population. 
By the way, there's yet another acronym that I need you to learn, FDF, or First Time Freshman. But there is good news. Many of you are familiar with the highly successful Metro Academies, which has shown us how a roadmap for how we can support our first time freshmen and increase their academic success, retention, and graduation. Last year, in an effort to try to figure out how to better support our first time freshmen, Academic Affairs and Student Affairs worked together on a self study of the first year of college. Uh, yeah, it has to have an acronym as well, and this one is FOE, or Foundations of Excellence. Uh, it was started by SSGI. Or the Student Success and Graduation Initiative. Hope, hopefully you all take a note. <laughs> this coming year, you'll be hearing a lot about the implementation of some of those recommendations, and I hope that you will come out and participate as much as possible in the process. Our first-time freshmen leave the university in shockingly high percentages, and we clearly need to do more to support them. There's good news on the teaching side as well. A program in biology called CEPL has been training faculty in the College of Science and Engineering on how to engage students and how to use evidence to support and improve their teaching. And this year, we are enormously proud to see the Center for Equity and Excellence in Teaching and Learning, uh, CEDL, start its important work. This center will be a place for faculty to gain valuable skills to become more effective teachers inside and outside the classroom. And I encourage both the new faculty and our returning faculty to take advantage of all of the opportunities that they will give you. All this brings me to one very good decision that I made while I was a probationary faculty, and that was to run for a position on a university committee. I was advised by my RTP committee to become involved in some sort of service work outside my college. Uh, this was before I went up for tenure and promotion. So I looked through the list of committees in the spring, and I thought the University Interdisciplinary Council, UIC for short, looked very interesting. Much to my surprise, I was elected. Over the years, I've come to recognize that that was not such an amazing feat. We are not overwhelmed with uh, volunteers for our committees. But while serving on this committee, I learned a lot about how our university was structured. I learned about that edu general education program that had so baffled me as an advisor, and I even ended up serving on several GE-related committees and ended up as general education director. Talk about the blind leading the blind. Along the way, I met a wide range of people. I met staff members, I met administrators, and I met faculty from other departments and colleges. Surprise, surprise, these people were really interesting and saw things in a different way than I did often. Some of them end up, ended up being very useful resources to me when I had questions or, or problems or something I couldn't figure out. So instead of being stuck over in Thornton Hall all the time, which is where my teaching, research, and office were, I got out and started to see parts of the university that I never knew existed. Eventually, I ended up on the Academic Senate, and now I'm proud and honored to serve as its chair. Through our work on the Academic Senate, faculty, staff, students, and administrators work together to craft policies to change the way that we do things here at San Francisco State, and I would like to think largely for the better. We pass resolutions that express our values and goals, often laying out work that we want to do in the future. We have members who serve on the statewide academic senate, making sure that our voices are being heard in the chancellor's office in Long Beach. Many of the things that baffled me at the start of my career were products of the academic senate. But the good news is that there are, if there are problems with the way that we are doing things on campus, they can be changed. And they should be changed through our system of shared governance. I'm extremely proud that we are not a faculty summit, but we are an academic summit, where all campus members have a voice and can affect change. So keep in mind next spring, when the Senate elections come around, that there are a large number of ways in which you can be involved. In addition to helping out our university through shared governance, service work can be incredibly satisfying, both personally and professionally. And there are plenty of opportunities to be had. All it takes is that first step. So thank you very much for your attention, and now I would like to introduce our president, Dr. Leslie Wong, again, to deliver our closing remarks. Thank you. It is my privilege and an honor to welcome all the faculty, staff, and students to this new academic career. You have today been introduced to a cadre of new faculty, staff, and professionals who will join our efforts to provide students and their families an excellent university education. They join a group of veteran teacher scholars who bring excellence to the classroom and commitments to student success. 
Because of their efforts, San Francisco State University's evolution continues down a path of excellence. Our students and our alums are testaments to that. I cannot think of any other place where the guiding values of our strategic plan are so very much alive. So before I start my formal comments, let me introduce and, and welcome a couple of people. I want to first of all welcome Ms. Jackie Foley, the new president of Associated Students. She has already made her mark by focusing her team on key issues ranging from the opening of the Shoe Center, the inauguration of the Gator Pass, which I believe the cards work in it, uh, on, on our transportation systems, and to adding a quality effort to the Student Success Initiative. Uh, he's not here today, but I want to share with you that Jason Port's portfolio has expanded to include both UCorp and physical planning and development. This will add significant value to campus planning and redesign, as you will hear about in just a moment. I want to also welcome Dr. Joseph Romero. I believe he's in the dark city out there somewhere. <laughs> he is our ACE Fellow from the University of Mary Washington in Virginia. And the past weeks have been uh, eye-opening for me to hear him. His specialty is classical studies, and I want to welcome Joe to the campus. Um, This year will also be uh, a time where I look forward to the successful searches for a permanent provost and a permanent vice president of admin finance. Uh, you might have noticed how often you heard the word interim uh, today and throughout the coming months. We are working hard to change that to get permanent appointments in, uh, but it's, it's also a sign, I have to tell you, of other campuses across the country stealing our talent, uh, and we're going to work hard to retain as much of that as we can. I want to make note of less than five key activities and goals for me and my leadership team. Uh, and these are not the only goals by, by, by which we will mark our progress this year, but they are certainly central to our vision for today and tomorrow. And as new faculty and staff, you will hear me say that often, but, that I do respect history but my job is about today and tomorrow. First, a small army of designers, architects, and planners are nearing completion of the new campus master plan. Many of you contributed to that effort last spring. We will be rolling that out this year, and we will again seek your input on the final plan. With the completion of the Mashouf Wellness Center, the beginning of construction for the first phase of Apollo 1, our mixed-use project, and the initiation of serious program planning for the Creative Arts Building to be constructed. These projects initiate a serious redefinition of our physical plans. We have an antiquated physical campus. I have been told by architects and designers that we are the oldest most overused campus in California. We have nearly $500 million in deferred maintenance alone. I am honored to share with you that as we begin this uh, very aggressive transformation of the campus, that housing for students, faculty, and staff is our number one priority, closely followed by the state-of-the-art new academic buildings being planned. Number two, the academic units in partnership with student affairs, admin and finance and advancement have created a great sense of excitement and focus with the ongoing discussion and strategizing with our Foundations of Excellence effort. Key to this effort is the launch this fall of the Center for Equity and Excellence in Teaching and Learning, CEDL. We have a lot of those efforts. This is a significant rethinking of our curriculum and the student experience. And I am so excited by the potential for San Francisco State University to once again 
set the agenda for what it means to earn a university education. Third, and probably the most important, it is also part of our DNA to tackle difficult issues head on. Whether it's 1899, 1968, or 2018, it is clear that we have not been, nor will we continue to be, a shy and quiet campus today or tomorrow. Our trademark energy must now ta tackle the key issue of campus climate as only this campus and all the talent that is on it can. There will be three key points that encompass this effort and it will be the utmost priority for my leadership team to execute. First, and perhaps most important, is the President's Task Force on Campus Climate. If there is a single issue facing us and this country and higher education this past year and certainly now, I cannot think of anything more important than the campus climate here at San Francisco State University. And the issue is so complex that we will try to focus on singular key issues and challenges that result and will result in real action plans. We can't face all of the issues at once, and it doesn't make good use of our energies and our time. So, if I could just share with you the first phase of many. The first phase of the task force will be to examine the conditions on this campus regarding anti-Semitism. I expect this task force to recommend specific actions and strategies to be implemented that will ensure that our commitment to the safety of our Jewish faculty, staff, students, and guests is met. Faculty, staff, students, and community leaders will gather to recommend actions and strategies towards this goal. Second, Academic Affairs and the Academic Senate will be sponsoring a year-long program focused on what it means to be a university in a world full of conflict. From experimental courses and seminars, guest lectures, to programming in many, many classes, our thinking and our doing will show that we will not shy away from, from the challenges of this conflicted world. Third, Student Affairs is sponsoring an ad hoc workshop group led by Dr. Trevor Getz that you heard earlier that is charged with developing an equity and campus climate educational outreach plan. And this goes hand in hand with the establishment of a new unit in student affairs, the Division of Equity and Community Inclusion. We will continue our efforts in tackling a broad spectrum of challenges from our commitment to our Dream Center, to the new Black Unity Center, and our commitment to our Arab and Muslim students. These are big challenges, and I am confident in our collective ability to make a difference. Moving on, the CSU and this campus will continue to implement our long-term student success plan as part of our commitment and obligations to the system-wide student success and graduation initiative. There are real targets to be met, and we will focus considerable effort to meet our goals uh, that are expected of us. Luckily, the Chancellor has provided significant dollars to finance many of our strategies, and we are certainly grateful for that support. Some of you have, who have been local attendees to the initial meeting of the faculty know that I never try to focus my comments on the B word. But the budget news is okay. You were thinking something else. <laughs> the best news is that we are nearing a moment when we can confidently state that we will soon have eliminated the significant structural deficit I inherited in 2012. And this is no small feat. That number approaches 10 to 12 million dollars that through the hard work of all of you everybody on staff. I just want to thank you. It has been an effort and we are almost there. Along with this effective budget management 
has been our success in re reversing enrollment shortfalls, and the predicted gap this year of nearly 9% has now been reduced to half of that. And I can tell you that I will be pushing for even better results. This is going to be a productive and yet a demanding year. It will take considerable teamwork and commitment to excellence in the classroom and in all of our scholarly activities. And we are under a lens of criticism that I can tell you in my 44 years in higher ed that I've just not seen or heard of before. The devaluing of a college degree and a university education. A sense of craziness about what is true and what is not. Leadership that lies, leadership that misleads, and a country that is being tested to its very core. I will tell you that I believe and I am committed that the solution to this is the work that all of us do on this campus, in our classrooms, with our students. Let's also not forget that student success is everyone's responsibility. No matter where you work on this great university, we need to reduce, if not eliminate, a lot of administrative and procedural habits that slow down our students' progress. I took it personally this past year when students, a large number of them, in a recent marketing study, noted how wonderful the classroom is, but how hard it was to get through our processes. The metaphors about the bureaucracy here were truly painful to read. I've asked each of the vice presidents to address efficiency and service to our students and their families with their respective teams, and I think we will turn that situation around. In closing, I want to invite you, the faculty, staff, students, our guests, that we need to continue on our path of excellence. There is much to do, and there is much that is expected of us. So many of our students will step onto a university who will be the first in their families to do that. They will succeed because of the work of the faculty and the staff and every employee on this campus. And as I can tell you, I am so proud of the accomplishments of our alum our alums out there in the world that speak so glowingly of their experience on this campus. Let's continue that tradition, let's continue those results, and let's have a terrific year. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Long, and thank you to everyone who participated in our event today. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing um, some of you, if not most of you, uh, over in the student uh, center, we have in the Rosa Parks rooms some light refreshments set up for you. So come, over, come on over and socialize, and we look forward to a great year. Thank you all.